OK, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, oh, it is the wrong way around. OK, so I'm going to talk about the quantum interference of latent time correlations. So uh, now let's uh, put aside the debates we had earlier with all these resources and the switch versus uh, coherent control. So this is a completely new result. So uh, we've never presented this before. Um, so it's on a kind of a new effect. Maybe at the end, if we have time, we can discuss relations to the coherent control versus quantum switch. But um, I hope you can sort of view this as a separate result uh, without getting into the um, debates we've had, had for the last uh, two years or, or last day, if you like. So this is a joint work with Julio, my supervisor, and a uh, former undergraduate student here at HKU, Mike Mao, who's now doing some practical computer science masters in America. Uh, so let's. And it hopefully it'll be on the archive soon, so not yet, but hopefully very soon after this conference. So as we have seen today, um, we've had a series of recent papers talking about communication advantages from placing quantum channels in a superposition of different configurations. So on channels of different paths, like Alistair talked about, or different orders, like Julia talked about. And so in the sense, we're coherently controlling different aspects, the path or the order. And here, we present a new effect, the coherent control of the time of application of a ch quantum channel with memory. So let's look at this picture here. So imagine we have some transmission line connecting two communicating parties. So Alice is here, and Bob is here. And this transmission line is noisy, and it has some noise, these yellow things. And when you apply this channel twice in succession, the noisy processes between the two applications of the channel are correlated. So now imagine I put a single particle in a superposition of two time modes. One goes through at time t0 and the other one at time t1. And we will now use this uh, setup to show some communication advantages. So. We've had the introduction. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about the notation, uh, then discuss in general how to communicate through these type of channels. Then I'll introduce the framework, which will be the same as the framework Alistair briefly mentioned, sort of framework with vacuum extensions, uh, and then discuss the new communication advantages. And finally, if we have time, discuss relations to the previous stuff discussed today. So the notation will be basically the notation of uh, Julio and the uh, uh, guys from Pavia. So uh, we have information carriers are represented by quantum states of some system C. And physically, we will have transmission lines. And each use of a transmission line between a sender and a receiver is described by a quantum channel that maps states from the system C to states of the system C. And, that's, and those channels are denoted, the set of all those channels are denoted Chan C. And are drawn as follows. Uh, now we can also consider time correlated channels or quantum channels of memory. So these can be thought just as channels on a tensor product of two systems, C1 and C2. And in this case, we, we just consider the case where, so if you use only the channel once, the first time or the second time, in both cases, it acts like a same, the same quantum channel C. But there is some memory here between the two uses, which I've drawn in this way. Uh, so if you, so there will be some series of noisy processes happening here. And in general, the, the sort of choice of noisy processes will be correlated between the two uses. So with access to such a time correlated channel, uh, we can consider, let's consider a specific case. So in fact, the same case that Alistair uh, talked about earlier, um, because we're kind of familiar with that now. So let's consider that each use of this device is described by a uniform randomization over the identity and three Pauli operations. So the Paulis are denoted by sigmas. And then, um, just sorry, maybe I forgot to say, uh, the channels are, are denoted by a curly C. So the not curly C is the system, 
and the curly C is the channel acting on the system. So just to clarify this notation. So here we have sigmas, are the, the, the sigma also not curly is now with the I's are the cross operators. <laughs> <laughs> and the curly sigma is the, the, the map which takes, you know, so that you apply the map on both sides of the density matrix. So I hope that makes sense. So uh, according to LaTeX, this is the curly sigma. Um, so we can now consider a uniform randomization over these Paulis. That's given by this, a completely depolarizing channel D. So that's a quarter probability you apply one of the four sigma operations. Um, and however, we assume that the second in the second application, there is the choice of sigmas is correlated with the first by some probability distribution P, J, given I. So here we pick sigma I and here sigma J, but the, they are correlated in some way. And then uh, a very long time ago, almost 20 years ago now, Machiavello and Palma showed that, in fact, even if individually both applications are described by the completely depolarizing channel, with knowledge of these correlations here, we can send two particles, one at, at two different times, and encode them in such a way that you can retrieve some information, that Bob can actually retrieve information at the other end. Now, in this work, we are going to show that we can achieve even better, in fact, we can achieve perfect classical communication through such a scenario by initializing a single particle in a superposition of two times, so in the plus state on the sort of timer degree of freedom, which, so that we have a single particle that goes in the superposition of time t0, so here, and time t1 here. Uh, to explain uh, how to construct this kind of superposition of times, we have the same problem that Alistair mentioned earlier, in the sense that a coherent control over paths or times of a particle is not well defined and requires additional parameters. Uh, these additional parameters can be constructed as through uh, the notion of a vacuum extension. So I think Alistair talked about was it transformation matrices. Uh, so here we have a completely equivalent definition of the vacuum extension. So the physical motivation behind this formalism is that in reality, we have communication devices that are physical objects in space, and they connect the sender and the receiver. When we send a particle through them, we model this device mathematically as a quantum channel, C, curly C, acting on this system. But when no particle is traveling through the transmission line, we model it as an identity channel acting on the vacuum. So overall, our physical device can be thought of as a new quantum channel, C tilde, that acts on an extended system, C directs some vac, where vac is the vacuum system. So we can define this new channel as C, curly C tilde. Uh, so it's just, which can be any channel on this extended system, C directs some vac, which acts like the original channel C when the input is restricted to sector C and acts as the identity on the vacuum when the input is restricted to vac. But this is non-unique, so there are many possible choices that give you these uh, defined outcomes. In our previous paper, uh, we proved that the cross operators of the new channel are given by C i tilde, so sorry about the, the sort of abuse of notation of the letter C, um, direct some gamma i, so these are some complex amplitudes, which sum up to one, on the vacuum sector. So Mathematically, it's non-unique, but given the physics of a device, a Hamiltonian will tell you exactly what a vacuum extension will be of a, of a particular physical device. And if you're able to build a device, you could build a Hamiltonian such that you get what you want. Now, going back to time-correlated channels, a time-correlated channel C core um, has a vacuum extension C core tilde um, in the same way. Uh, so, so uh, yes. just to confirm, I think I understood, but this vacuum extension, it's equivalent to what yes. Alice there present, right? Basically, you, you're choosing between one of these time spring dilation and fixing. Exactly. So uh, these parameters here, the gamma i's, mm -hmm. completely determine the way in which this channel acts. So uh -huh. now you can define a super map. Although, oh, sorry, I would comment not yeah. exactly, because the vacuum is something that you have access to, whereas the environment okay. is not. Okay. Mm. So mathematically, you get the same results. But yeah. Some of the interpretation okay. is a bit different. Yes. Okay. yes. 
And if it's unitary, for instance, this, this gamma i would be your global phase. Exactly, right? a global phase, yeah. Exactly. So I hope that makes sense. OK, so now we can construct, we have access to these uh, vacuum extensions. We can construct a composite system. So consider now, so these are the systems, C1 tilde tends to C2 tilde. So these are these two systems. These two, so this one can be either in C1 or VAC. This can be in C2 or VAC. So the tensor product of these two contains a one particle sector, which is either a particle in the top branch and the vacuum in the bottom, or vice versa. This is, moreover, if C1 and C2 are isomorphic and isomorphic to some message system M, this, is, this one particle sector is isomorphic to M tensor T, where T is a qubit. And I will show you why in the next slide. So essentially, we can have an isomorphism V that takes a psi on the message here, tensor zero time, which is equivalent to sending the particle here at time t equals zero and the vacuum at t equals two. If I, however, put my timer in the one state, I send my, the vacuum at time t equals zero, so here, and the particle at t, time t equals two, uh, one, sorry. Uh, so in that case, we can define a superposition of times of a time-correlated quantum channel as simply what we just discussed, but having the timer qubit in the plus state. So the timer is now in the superposition of going at being in time t equals zero and t equals one in which case we have a superposition of, going, of a single particle going through this time-correlated channel in the first time or the second time. So now we can use this formalism to understand potential communication advantages. So let's go back to our good old example with the Pauli matrices. So I hope you remember we have the curly sigma i, which is the map acting on, which is the map of the Pauli matrices. Uh, each application is the completely depolarizing channel. But now, crucially, we have a particular form of correlations. So we consider the correlations where there's a, a, a permutation of noises. So imagine that I pick a particular Pauli, let's say Pauli i in the first instance. Then I always pick Pauli i prime, which is something else. So for example, I could pick, say, if this is Pauli y, then I always pick Pauli z. For example, that could be one pattern. And then that would say Pauli Z and Y flip and identity and X flip. That we can consider such a correlation, correlated noise model. Um, and moreover, the, the vacuum extensions of each Pauli, as actually Marco pointed out, since uh, Paulis are unitary, the vacuum extensions are given by global phases. However, the global phases are rel become relative phases when we consider the superposition. So we have some, for each Pauli, there is an so the vacuum phase phi i. Um, so now we have so a lot of, let's go back and think what we have. We have the phase parameters, we have the permutation parameter, and we have the superposition. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, now let's try and stick them together. So we can now define the superposition of times of this correlated depolarizing channel with permutation p, where p is this, the permutation which switches the indices. Specified by the vacuum extension d p tilde, which is, has Pauli matrices of this form. And the outcome is, in fact, equal to this expression here, where we have a term called the latent interference term, capital G, which depends on the permutation, the vacuum phases, and the input state, crucially. Um, and it's defined in this way. So it actually, this only works if this term is Hermitian, which is, uh, but I won't go into detail on that now. Um, so we see that it depends on the vacuum uh, phases. And a receiver now that gets this output state can measure the timer in the Fourier basis to distinguish this operation from this one, and hence, in general, recover information of the input state row. Now, we say that these time correlations are latent because they're, they're the, a single particle, so each branch of the superposition, only travels through this time correlated channel once. So no part of the superposition, no branch of the superposition actually experiences the time correlations directly. The correlations are only accessed latently through the interference of the two branches at the end. 
So now let's, we can just do some calculations. And if we pick some nice permutations, for example, the one I just mentioned, where Pauli, so P, so the 0, x, y, z go to 1, 0, um, so x identity z, y. So if we permute z and x and i and, uh, sorry, z and y and i and x, we get this latent interference term g of a nice sinusoidal function of the vacuum phases. And in this case, we can just pick uh, particular vacuum phases for particular phases, we in fact get that the superposition channel is equal to a noiseless bit channel. And this is quite striking. So we have gone from a completely depolarizing channel, which cannot transmit any information, but has some strange correlations. And just by knowing these correlations, we obtain a perfect uh, communication channel with unit capacity. So, uh, and in general, we can look at sort of a whole spectrum of these vacuum phases. So if I plot the Hollevo information, which is the measure of the classical capacity, against different vacuum phases, I get a nice picture here, where <laughs> the color scale is the Hollevo information. So we see sort of there's a non-trivial pattern, but it's sort of periodic, uh, uh, that gives different types of, yeah, that, that some of them are better than others, let's say. Um, and if you pick different permutations of the noises, then you'd also get different patterns. And crucially, this effect cannot be achieved through the superposition of independent channels. So the, the stuff uh, Alistair uh, talked about, the superposition of, of two channels, um, which uh, uh, Julia and I also worked on in our previous paper, this, uh, if you just, ooh, oops, um, if you, you can think of that really as something very similar to this, but you cut away the correlations, and this just becomes J, an independent index. Then you'd have a superposition of this, just two independent channels. And if, in that case, uh, you cannot never get perfect classical uh, capacity. So that's the kind of main result of this new work. Um, and in the last three, two minutes, two minutes, uh, I can mention the fact that, interestingly, if we have access to two such time-correlated channels, we can, in fact, simulate this uh, quantum switch. So if I pick i equal to i prime, so there's that kind of an identity permutation of noise, then we actually, for, uh, strangely, for any choice of vacuum extension, we can implement or, or, or simulate the quantum switch. And in fact, we can do even better. So with, this, is, this is the setup which I, my understanding is um, somehow equivalent to at least some type of quantum optics um, experiment of the quantum switch, then with the same kind of implementation, I can pick i prime not equal to i, but actually equal to this uh, strange permutation here, and I can get the whole of the information of 0.3 uh, compared to 0.05 uh, for certain choices of vacuum extension. So it kind of shows that the, the, the quantum optics simulation of the quantum switch, uh, the same kind of thing that does that can actually do even better by considering kind of vacuum extended channels and the framework of superpositions of paths or superpositions of times. And this leads us uh, to kind of compare the correlations that arise in the presence of indefinite causality versus the correlations that arise in the presence of non-Markovianity, or non-Markovianity meaning just kind of the correlations between noise and in um, consecutive applications of a quantum channel. So, uh, yeah, Alistair discussed this uh, kind of debate on the resource theories here um, on these two papers. Uh, but here, so you can have a look at those papers um, if you're interested in the kind of comparison of resources. But all I'll say here is that in the superposition of times picture here, we have two uses of two time-correlated transmission lines with vacuum extensions and coherent control over the time of applica application. Whereas in the kind of supermap of the quantum switch, we have one use of each of two independent transmission lines um, with coherent control over the order. So it's clear that, I mean, at, at least at first sight, it's, it, it does not look like they are the same. They're two quite different things. Um, and so I think we, I would just say the same as some of the previous speakers have said. It's uh, important to kind of be clear what we mean when we compare the two. Um, so I think that's something that would be nice to continue discussing later. Uh, and finally, I'll just say that the communication advantages presented in this framework superposition of times, so either in the kind of simulation of the switch or just in the one where you take away this red thing and, and just imagine the original result, 
we have that the communication advantage is dependent on the permutations of noise, the phase differences, and the coherent control of time. Whereas it appears the quantum switch uh, has communication advantages arising from a coherent control only, but in this case over the causal order. So somehow we get something very similar from something that structurally is quite different. So that's an interesting uh, thing, I think, for further discussion as well. So to summarize the talk, uh, I've presented a, a novel quantum phenomena, the interference of latent time correlations for communication through white noise. So this is constructed from the superposition of two time modes going through the vacuum extension of time correlated channels. And we can get perfect classical communication through really completely noisy channels when used individually by sending only a single particle. So we encode only a single bit, uh, but in a superposition of a fixed um, kind of time mode that is in the plus state. And finally, this can be used, this framework can be used to simulate the quantum switch and in fact do even better, it appears. So thank you very much. Uh, what is the connection between the dispute between the two papers in your new results? Because there was like reference to these papers, and then you were comparing things uh, that were not subject. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're right. There's not really a so it's not really a direct link. Um, my point was just that here I wanted to emphasize what the different resources are in the two cases. So you have you kind in of these yeah. two cases on the figure, but not in the papers. Exactly. Yeah. So, but that kind of so the idea here is that you have what are the the things in color are the things that, the things in color are kind of the, the things that you pay for. You go and buy like your communication channels. And the things in white are the super maps, the, the maps that act on the channels. And so this is just, but, but that kind of discussion where we define exactly what we mean by these communication channels or super maps and how they are constructed in a resource theoretic manner. This fra framework is um, discussed in uh, our paper here, <coughs> which is a response to. Um, well, kind of the idea, the kind of idea of, of constructing this actually came um, because of your paper. Can you go to the next slide? Because mm -hmm. you wrote uh, that you, uh, in mm -hmm. contrast to switch, you need a co coherent control of the time of application. Yeah. But when I think about all implementations of the quantum switch with the known physics, yeah, you also need a co coherent control of the time of application. Sure. So why it is not also so part of the switch? I mean. So in this case, I was, I was considering just the, the, the mathematical construct of these two things. So if we just think mathematically, we have uh, given these two mathematical objects, the, the, the CPTP maps, and the quantum switch coherently controls their order. But there is no reference to time directly until we think about the implementation. I find it very strange <laughs> to compare something which is you call superposition of times. Yeah. And then time is there uh, by definition. Sure. It's something which you're not allowed to represent in time yeah. because it's a mathematical switch. And then you say, oh, in one case, I do need co coherent control yeah. of time, another not. So, uh, yeah, one so is defined in time, the other <laughs> is mathematical. So, I, I, I kind of ag agree with this. So, I, in fact, maybe it's, it, it's misleading to compare the two. But let's say this is like a mathematical object which you can define, and, and Julio defined a long time ago. And now we started thinking about the optical implementations. And so I would say that if you think about the optical implementations, you should, you are actually, what you're doing is you're doing this. And not only the optical implementation, that's the whole point. No? Yeah, so exactly. It's not that only optical implementations exist. There are a lot of strange implementations that Marco was mentioning today, or gravitation. So somehow this, the narrative of the story changes depending on, the, on which physical resources are in a certain implementation. So, so yeah, so this we, we think that uh, like this, I think, is the correct way of thinking about what is happening in the optical implementations. And uh, maybe not all of them, because there are several different ones, but in the one where you coherently control a path going through a channel, I would say that what you have is a, as a resource, is a non Markovian channel, a channel with correlated noise occurring at two time steps. Now, clearly, there's some, some more stuff that can be discussed about the localization of times, but if you draw it in a circuit, you can draw it like this with the vacuum extended. Uh, would you say that the left picture is the only one which we can perform the right picture with the known physics? I, I don't know. Uh, I think so far, yeah. so, so far, far now. I mean, clearly, so the point is that the vacuum extension is a very particular type of implementation. You could, I think, in this case, we assume that the past degree of freedom is the control, and the internal degree of freedom of a photon is the, 
the, the message. Now maybe you could invert them and, and draw some diagram that's slightly different, but I would say that this, as far as we know, something of this type is what we can do with uh, quantum optics. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Th there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think that we I'm can sorry, still but see. But the point yeah. is that uh, these two things, uh, from, the, from step one to step, uh, to the last yeah. step, but if you just look at the beginning and the end, they produce the same output. Yeah. They are the same channel. Mm -hmm. But the super map, they are like, totally different. They are defined on different domains. So there is, mm -hmm. by no means, the kind of optical implementation is the switch in, in the mm -hmm. sense uh, in the original sense. I also want uh -huh. to say that when you talk yeah. about resource, you really need to I yeah. mean, we agree yeah. on implementation. Yeah. And then putting this picture in contrast to each other, yeah. where one is implementation and the other is mathematical, doesn't mm -hmm. seem fair. So, so I, I agree, but, but the point was that this white, the white uh, and wire stuff in the left-hand side is also a supermap. So it's, it's like saying, what is the sup physical super or the supermap that implements what we can physically realize, how we can physically uh, realize the switch in, in quantum optics. So like it's going a step back and saying, OK, this is the experiment. It, it is interesting. And this is what is going on mathematically. Uh, yeah. Well, I'd just like to comment very similar to I also feel something very similar to Charles. So the comparison is not fair, right? Because on the right hand side, the sure, switch, yeah. you really you plug really the depolarized. It doesn't matter, like the cross. There is no vacuum. Exactly, you don't yeah. even need the yeah. discussion. And yeah. in the left hand side, it's similar to what Alistair discussed, right? Yeah. So, for example, <coughs> you, you can even find, if you, if you get this depolarizing chain where you have the integral of all possible unit theories, mm -hmm. I think very likely you don't have no activation, right? Sorry, in integral over all? Because uh, you need to choose your depolarizing chain very well, right? And the one you chose was like a convex combination between four Pauli operators. Yes, yes. But another way to decompose this depolarizing chain is the integral over all, all possible unit theory operators. Yeah. This also provides a, a depolarizing. In very likely in this case, you have no activation. Right? Possibly. I mean, if you look, just look at the, I mean, let's say of the simple case, where it's not, nothing to do with the switch, but still you can see that some points have, are white, which means zero uh, information transfer. But yeah, so I, I agree that so they are different things, right? But that's, I, I'm not try, that's exactly the point I'm trying to make, that they are different. The fact that one is a supermap acting on two uses of two time correlated channels, and the other one is, so is acting on ordinary quantum channels. So that I, I completely agree. But I think that's just the point I am trying to make, that they are two different things. And, and that maybe they sh indeed shouldn't be compared uh, on the mathematical level. Mm -hmm. so maybe we should stop here for the session.